Hey everybody, Michael here, the rain coach with Green Venture, and welcome to my rainscape. So this journey actually started for me back in 2008 at the University of Waterloo where I did my undergraduate education on geography and environmental management. And it was really courses like uh, ecology, wetlands, hydrology, even courses on uh, rivers and uh, managing the urban environment. And it, it kind of led me to something action-based. Gardening and landscaping is something that is very, it's very practical, it's very rewarding, it's very visible. You can clearly see the fruits of your labor very quickly. Um, so that's really, that's really where it started for me and, and what I wanted to be able to do was help my watershed wherever I was. So it doesn't always have to be at a conservation land, it doesn't always have to be on big urban parks, it can be in your own backyard or in your own front yard in this case. So with this particular rain garden, we have to talk about the downspouts because that's where the rain starts. It's essentially taking all the water from two thirds of, of the roof on this small East Mountain bungalow. When we originally moved in, the house had connected downspouts. So we noticed that we had water in the basement on both sides of the house right where the downspouts were. So we had to disconnect the downspouts and find a creative way to incorporate that water into the landscape. And I didn't want to just uh, send the water to the storm sewer. I didn't want to just put it onto the lawn. So that's why I had to build a rain garden to incorporate that water into the landscape. And obviously it helps water these plants and bring nature into the site. So once the downspouts were disconnected and directed into the garden, we created these stone inlets to dissipate the force of the water. And there's one on each downspout on this particular garden. Okay, so from the inlets, the water then flows through this bowl portion. Now this is the main engine of the rain garden. This is where the water is going to be settling and absorbing into the ground. Now recently I had to dig out a little bit of this bowl portion because over time uh, sediment and organic material will build up and uh, decrease the depth. So to get uh, more infiltration, I just dug this out a little bit. That's why it's a little bit bare. But under ideal circumstances, as in next year, two years from now, this will all be vegetated so that you're uh, harnessing the power of the plants to absorb that water. And this stone patch in the front is the outlet. So if it's full and still receiving water, water can flow through onto the lawn. So the main species composition in here is mostly goldenrod, aster, grasses, and some other perennial wildflowers. I really went for the, uh, the, the meadow look because it suits uh, my aesthetic. So I always encourage people to make their rain garden your own. There's no uh, cookie cutter, you know, kind of footprint that it has to look like this. Uh, so get creative with it and uh, use plants that speak to your taste. In here I have uh, some Canada goldenrod. That was actually a volunteer. I didn't plant it. You know, I have to control it, of course. There's a, a, a decent amount of maintenance that goes into that, but it's a part of it that I enjoy. There's also lots of Echinacea preparia. There's some uh, biennial uh, black-eyed Susans. There's lots of Carex grasses. There's little blue stem ferns as well. Uh, here, which is about to bloom, we have some uh, Lobelia cardinalis, about five different types of sedges, as I mentioned before. Some uh, hostas that uh, my neighbor gave me. I don't typically plant hostas myself, but I appreciate that they have a different leaf structure than everything else. So uh, it's a nice little contrast between all of the, uh, the, the different leaves and, and blades that are in here. So. When we originally uh, built the rain garden in 2017 with Hamilton Naturals Club, we actually didn't plant it at all. So everything that's in here is within three years old. And you have to remember with, with native plants, in the first year they sleep, and then they creep, and then they leap. So expect it to be different and growing every year. So when we moved in in 2016, this whole area was really wet, and this is actually right where we had water getting into the basement. So. We built a little rain garden in this area. We extended the downspout over the walkway, put it into a rain barrel here, and raised up this area so we could store uh, our garbages and stuff like that. And also surrounded them with wildflowers so that they would be uh, hidden from the street. So this rain barrel, I actually don't use to water plants. I really just use it as a temporary storage reservoir to take pressure off the landscape. So as the rain barrel fills and it overflows, it just uh, falls down this little uh, stone path at the lot line and then eventually out down uh, further in, into the front yard. So when the rain barrel is full, I actually wait a day, maybe two days at the most, 
and then I empty it either into the rain garden itself or onto the permeable uh, driveway extension. And that way it's fully empty to receive water the next time it rains. So that's one of the reasons why I love to encourage people to use soil and plants to solve drainage problems. Because to me, this is a fairly permanent solution. I haven't had a single problem since uh, this was built and you solve the problem with nature. I actually used to work for Green Venture back in 2014 as what was called a rain, uh, rain home guide back in the day. And basically what we did was we helped people create rainscapes at their own properties so that they could help keep their property safe from water damage and then use rain as a resource to grow lots of plants. Um, and then I started Avesi in 2015, which is my landscape consulting company. And since then I've continued to work with Green Venture now as what we call the rain coach, which again is helping people create their own rainscapes. Um, and it's truly something that I, that I believe in. Everybody that uh, I've worked with that has done it is super happy with it. And there's really no better way to help your watershed, help the environment, help create habitat for native flora and fauna. So if rainscaping is something that you're considering, absolutely take the plunge, get in touch with Green Venture, get in touch with me, and we can help you take the next step. So that's the tour, everybody. Thanks for stopping by, and remember to use rain as a resource.